Welcome back to the Reflector channel. I'd like to introduce you to the Celestron Adorable. Now that's not really the model name, that's just how I refer to it. But I mean, come on, look at this thing. Shouldn't it be called the Adorable? Actually, this tiny telescope is called the Celestron CO62, and that's because the front lens is 62 millimeters in diameter. But when I tell you the full name of this telescope, you'll be able to tell exactly when it was made. Are you ready? Here we go. Cometron. That's right, Comet. Tron. Now, if you guessed it was made in the 1980s, then you deserve some breakdancing lessons. Or, as people my age like to say, debilitating knee injuries. The Cometron comes with this really cool carrying case that has a clear window on the front. Now, I really don't know the purpose of that clear window other than to tell you that there's a telescope inside as opposed to my jar of unfulfilled dreams. All joking aside, mostly, the Cometron has a really cool way to assemble it. It's almost like a little James Bond telescope. Let me show you. So here's the case. Let's turn it around here. Open it up. We'll pull the telescope out. It's mostly assembled as far as the telescope is concerned. We have the diagonal. It's a Celestron star diagonal made in Japan. More on that later. It has a couple of eyepieces. A 25 millimeter. and a nine millimeter. Now these are both of the volcano top style. That's a new term that I've learned. Uh, basically these older eyepieces, they don't have rubber cups on the top. They actually have these, uh, just these tapered tops. But here's the coolest part, the column. It's very heavy actually. Let's get this out of the way. Now what's interesting about this is that this handle is very, very heavy. This is a counterweight. So I'm gonna show you how this goes together. The three legs are actually hidden right here in basically the vertical shaft of the telescope. These just pull out and there's these threaded holes. There's three of them. Last one. They have these rubber feet, so you can put these on a table or you can put it uh, right on your car. Then you take the telescope, which has a quarter 20 thread. There's a little screw right there. Look at that. This counterweight is really nice. It does a good job. Now here we have this little cover here. We take this off. This actually has a V inside a circle. That means Vixen. I'll talk more about that later. I'm going to take that diagonal, put it right here, and let's go ahead and put a 25 millimeter eyepiece in. And there you go. This thing is surprisingly heavy. Now, Cometrons were a line of telescopes that were made in Japan by a company called Vixen, and they were resold in North America by Celestron. Now, that makes perfect sense if you consider that they were trying to capitalize on the Halley's Comet craze that was taking over the hobby in the mid-1980s. Unlike a lot of the other larger brand names, Celestron simply invented a whole new line of telescopes called the Cometron. This one, the CO62, is obviously the most adorable. Now, as such, this telescope was designed to look for a big comet, which is why it has a laughably low magnification, putting it into competition with something, say, like an astronomical set of binoculars. Now, these run you about $100 to $150, depending on if they're on sale. Now, in hindsight, Halley's Comet was kind of a dud in 1986, but of course, nobody knew that at the time. This telescope did come with a nine millimeter eyepiece, but with a focal length of just 300 millimeters, that led to a magnification of 300 divided by nine, uh, roughly 33 times magnification. Fun fact, this was me back in 1986, back when I had five more teeth. That year, my dad and I went to a star party in Columbus, Ohio to look for Halley's Comet. 
And that experience actually ended up as its own chapter in the best-selling adventure sci-fi novel, Red Hope, only available on Amazon. Now, if that kid could send you one message from the past, it would be this. Please push the like and subscribe button. Just because Haley's Comet was a bit of a party pooper back in the 1980s, that doesn't mean that this can't be used for other large objects like the moon or the moon. It's, yeah, it's pretty much just the moon scope. That's all I really use it for these days because after all, it's just a little bit more powerful than binoculars. But on the other hand, it's a lot less convenient. But here's the deal. These were made by Vixen back in the 1980s. If you've seen my other refractor review videos, you know that that basically means that these were made with a very high level of craftsmanship and they were probably underpriced. In fact, telescopes made by Vixen in the 1980s are becoming downright collectibles. Which makes it all the more strange that this one was stuck in some guy's closet for 30 years before I bought it used. As I mentioned, this is a very short refractor, so it's likely to have some chromatic aberration. Now, I'd like to take this outside and test it, but let's add a little bit of excitement, shall we? Let's welcome player number two, this guy right here. This short refractor telescope I bought at Goodwill for just $4. It also has a short focal length of roughly 380 millimeters, so it's slightly longer than the Cometron. I'm going to use the same eyepieces. This one is designed to use a 0.965 eyepiece, but I have an adapter to fix that. So let's take both of these outside and test them out on the moon. Let's start with the $4 telescope that has a 25 millimeter Celestron eyepiece. That's a magnification of about 15 times. Let's look at the moon. There's no viewfinder, which makes it a little bit tricky. It's not too bad, but I can't really get uh, razor sharp edges on it. But at 15 times magnification, it's not too bad. Let's switch it out with a 9mm eyepiece and get a 42 times magnification. Not having a viewfinder makes this a little bit tricky. I'm actually at the extent of how the focuser can move, and it's very soft. I'm going to try to eliminate the diagonal. scattered about as focused as I can get it with a 9mm. That's a magnification of about 42, but it's actually uh, pretty pretty blurry, unfortunately. And when I let go, it tends to fall down under its own weight. Let's switch to the Cometron. <laughs> Let's try the 25mm eyepiece and get a magnification of about 12 on the Cometron. This has a viewfinder, which makes it really easy. There we go, we have a razor sharp edge, the craters are in sharp focus, and there is no chromatic aberration. It's a really nice image. Now let's switch to the nine millimeter, which is about 33 magnification. That's a really fantastic image of the moon. The craters are really sharp, and the edge is really sharp too. And again, there's really no color smearing or chromatic aberration. That's impressive. This counterweighted handle sure does help out with any of the balance issues. As far as looking at the moon goes, I give the Cometron a thumbs up. <laughs> Alright, let's do a quick summary on this Goodwill Saturday Night Special Telescope. You know, if it weren't for the weight of this nice eyepiece, I think the wind would have blown this away. It doesn't turn on the azimuth, which is kind of frustrating, and the weight of the eyepiece actually drags it down It overcomes the friction joint. Now, I will say, you know, for the cost of $4, the moon was uh, actually okay. It wasn't razor sharp, and there was plenty of chromatic aberration in it. But if your budget is just $10, and you have access to some of those 0 0.965 uh, pretty cheap eyepieces, then I would say that, you know, this might be pretty good for a $10 budget. Now let's review the star of this video, the Celestron CO62 Cometron. It's heavy, it was made by Vixen, it was made in Japan in the 1980s, it's pretty cool. It had razor sharp edges on the moon and it had very little chromatic aberration. If there was an award for the most adorable telescope, then this robot looking little guy would win first place. 
Now, aside from being a pretty good moon scope, I really don't have much of a use for this. I guess you could use this as a ground spotting scope as well. But then again, this little guy may have the last laugh when Halley's Comet returns in 2061. Now, by the way, if you like this video, I have other reviews of other Vixen-made Japanese refractor telescopes. But until then, thanks for watching and clear skies, everybody. Oh yeah, I have a couple of announcements. You know, I'm a little bit behind the times, but I have started a Twitter page for this channel. Uh, you can get to it by going to twitter.com slash reflector guy. Uh, somebody else registered reflector and they didn't do anything with it. I don't understand that. But anyways, twitter.com slash reflector guy. I'll try to post pictures from the making of each of these videos. They could be a lot of fun. And of course, lastly, I haven't published any videos in the past few weeks, mainly because it's been insanely warm here in Texas, uh, reaching 108 almost every day, sometimes 112 at one point in time, and it gets too hot for the workshop here. My camera kept overheating and then shutting